Hello, my name is Leopold Armesto and in this presentation we are going to talk about microcontrollers specialized for IoT applications. This is the outline of the presentation. First, we're going to have an overview about microcontrollers, their signals and memory types. Also, then we are going to talk about microcontrollers for IoT applications and particularly companies Arduino, Expressive and Raspberry Pi for Nature. And then we will discuss about uh, which is the best uh, microcontroller for IoT applications and some of the alternatives to of microcontrollers. So a microcontroller uh, can be seen as a, a, a computer that has all the uh, elements uh, on a single chip. This is called SOC. And in particular has many elements around what is the uh, microcontroller unit, the MCU such as uh, the program memory, the data memory, general purpose uh, input and output uh, pins, which are called GPIO, and bus peripherals, also timers and interrupts, analog digital converters, and one specific uh, signal, which is the clock, which is the MCU it's running. So microcontrollers uh, can be used in order to control signals. Uh, that can be digital or analog signals. A digital signal is a signal that varies between two possible states, a high state or a low state. That means a logic one or a logic zero. And usually this is related with a specific um, five volt voltage or 3.3 voltage, depending on the microcontroller voltage. And, um, and then we have, a, in particular, a, a digital input. It's a signal that it's controlled by an external device. So the mi microcontroller basically monitors the state of the signal, so we read it as a high or a low. While a digital output, in this case, is the microcontroller, that, uh, the one that sets the value of the signal. And um, also an analog input is a special kind of input that uh, varies, uh, the, the, the values varies within the full uh, set of ranges or uh, voltages between 0 or 5 volts, let's say. And there's a microcontrol. Uh, there's a converter. It is called AC ADC that converts this analog signal into a decimal number, so we can use it internally uh, on the microcontroller. And the value depends on the resolution of the converter. Also, a very uh, classic and important type of signal is the PWM. It's a pulse modulated width signal in which we have some kind of periodic signal that the on time and the off time or high or low times can vary and they are variable. Uh, they can be seen as analog outputs, so it's like the microcontroller is generating some kind of analog output, particularly for when we try to control actuators such as motors or LEDs, they are relatively slower than the periodic, uh, the frequency of the signal and they can be seen as analog outputs. Also another important type of signal in microcontrollers are uh, interrupts. They, they are used to interrupt the, the, the program flow. That means that the, the, the point where the program is executing uh, similar instructions can be interrupted to, in order to execute, let's say, a higher priority task. This can be seen as external interrupts. So there's a device that generates some kind of interrupt to communicate or indicate to the microcontroller that has to attend a specific signal, like could be, for instance, uh, an encoder signal that uh, varies its states from low to high or whatever. And um, also, uh, even internal signals of the microcontroller, like a timer, to uh, execute a, a task periodically. Also, microcontrollers uh, are able to uh, handle bus signals. They are used to transmit data between the microcontroller and another external device, but with a, let's say, with a protocol. Um, classically, we can find the UART. It's a serial communication using two lines between two devices. They use the RX and TX, so the reception transmission and the transmission lines. Also, the I2C uh, bus, which is a serial communication using also two lines. Classically, they are known as SDA and SCL, 
and they use a master and a slave architecture. So that means that there's one device which is the master of the communication and other devices that are the slaves that they, they do not control, particularly the clock signal. And also there's a SPI communication in which we have a full duplex communication. In this case, we use four lines. One of them is the clock and two, two more are the MOSI and MISO signals, which are for the master output slave input or the other way around. So it's master input slave output. So they are input and output signals. And also another additional signal to control the state of the, the, the device, the ESP uh, device. So microcontrollers um, include memory, of course. And this memory can be divided into program memory and data memory. So the program memory is where we, we store our code, our program, and it's non-volatile. That means that whenever we uh, turn off the computer or the, the microcontroller, in this case, the, the, the data is persistent on that memory. And it's large in terms of size compared to data memory because it's much cheaper. While data memory, we also can, uh, let's say, differentiate between two types of memories. Classically, RAM memory, which is a volatile uh, memory. So that uh, means that it's deleted on every startup of the microcontroller. While we have some kind of ROM memory or EEPROM memory, which is where we can store long-term variables. And it's also uh, small uh, because it's very expensive. Then uh, we are, now we are going to talk about uh, specialized kind of microcontrollers that can be used for IoT applications. One of them is Arduino. Arduino indeed it's the name of a company and uh, this company developed an open hardware platform uh, together with an integrated development IDE. It's called Arduino IDE and they became very popular because all the designs um, were open for the, for the, for the public. So um, this kind of electronics they allow you to control all kind of low power electronics at five volts uh, with any kind of signals, digital output, uh, input and output signals, analog inputs, all these kind of signals we've seen before. Uh, but they have, of course, very limited um, processing performance because it's not a microprocessor. You need to, uh, to remember that. Uh, within the classic boards, we can find the Arduino Uno, Arduino Nena, Nano, Arduino Mega, but uh, there are newest uh, boards such as the Arduino Nano 33 Bluetooth Low Energy or the Arduino ESP32 that include actual hardware to, in, in, uh, to develop, um, in this case, IoT applications. Because the classic boards, they do not have any Wi-Fi nor Bluetooth uh, connection in this case. Expressive, it's another, it's a Chinese company that in 2014 developed and launched the ESP8266. Uh, uh, this was a very, they started with a board which was known as ESP01. It was a very small board with a Wi-Fi antenna and uh, it also became very popular in order to, at the beginning, to provide, uh, let's say, Wi-Fi connection to Arduino boards. But then in, uh, in 2015, they released the API for this, this board. So this, this was, uh, it was possible to actually uh, upload code on this, on this board. And later they developed the ESP32, which it's one of the, uh, let's say, one of the latest developments of this company that runs much faster. It includes two cores, much more RAM, and it includes Wi-Fi and Bluetooth indeed connection. And nowadays we can find even different uh, series. Among this ESP32, we can find different series. And compared to the classic Arduino boards, as I said before, they are much more powerful and they are ideal for IoT applications in this case. And also we, we would like to mention about a Raspberry Pi Foundation because Raspberry Pi uh, was a well-known, uh, in this case it's, it's, called, it's known as a single board computer that included uh, Ethernet, USB ports, uh, much more RAM, and it runs much more faster than a, a microcontroller. Because the difference is that, uh, compared to the previous ones, it can be seen as a computer. Indeed, it can handle uh, devices such as video and audio, audio uh, 
signals, an SD card, and a camera interface as well. And it includes, or usually, typically, it requires an operating system in order to, to, to develop uh, programs on these kind of boards. Compared to the microcontroller, which is much more simpler and everything is integrated on it. Uh, but uh, they develop also a Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, in this case, I'm, I include the W, so they have a Wi-Fi connection. And this is an actual microcontroller that is based on the RP2040 processor that runs at 133 MHz and, and includes up to 26 G general purpose input and output pins. And also includes a Wi-Fi antenna, of course. So the question is, which is the best for uh, for the for IoT? And of course, the answer is, it depends on what you want. And depending on the amount of signals or or, or uh, uh, the, the type of signals you want to control, depending on the, the the kind of connectivity you want, and depend of course also on the kind of electronics you want to attach to the to this board. Uh, there are options that might uh, let's say, uh, opt you for one uh, board or another one. In, in, the, in this course, we are going to use mostly uh, Arduino boards and also ESP32, which will be our preferred option because it's much more powerful. It includes Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and includes a lot of signals that we can use for any purpose. And of course, just to conclude this uh, presentation, uh, apart from microcontrollers, there are alternatives to them. I already mentioned some of them. Uh, one of them are microprocessors, such as the Raspberry Pi. And uh, the idea is that they, 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 they are have much more, uh, uh, let's say, computational power. And, uh, and they can handle directly many uh, devices because they, they have access to direct, uh, direct access to, to the signals through the operating system kernel. But there are alternatives that uh, it's worthy to mention, such as DSP. It's a specialized, it's like a microcontroller, but it's specialized for processing signals, like implementing filters at a very fast uh, um, processing. And also FPGAs, which are uh, very, very fast because it's like, uh, let's say, coding a specific uh, circuit on a, on a hardware. And it's flexible because it can be reconfigured for many purposes. But of course, that takes, that takes a lot of, I mean, the learning curve is much more difficult in general compared to the microcontroller. Well, in this presentation, I've been talking about microcontrollers specialized for IoT. Thank you very much.